180 million Americans, as is the electorate, have got to choose between either Kamala Harris or Donald Trump. Wow, what a choice. Um, I think they perhaps next time might want to do a little bit better. But anyway, that is as it is. Um, let's talk now to Michael Graham, who's a US political commentator. Hey, Michael, how are you doing? Always delighted to be with you on talk. Well, yeah, thank you. And you must be having... We well, need the real Michael Graham to make up for that fake Mike Graham. You well, I, I always love it when you're on with Mike Graham. It's Mike Graham talking <laughs> to Michael Graham. I mean, it's kind I'm of... I'm the one who hasn't been ordered by the courts to pick up trash on the side of the road. I just want to make sure that's, <laughs> it's, that's it's, the one I It's am, kind of so through, the looking, so you know. through the looking glass thing here. But um, <laughs> anyway, let, let, just stay there for a second, Michael, because I was in the US last week, uh, and I was genuinely fascinated to see the passion that there is for politics. I mean, there, there are a lot of politicos here here in the UK, but we're all quite understated, I think. But in the US, watch this, they literally stand at the side of the road cheering and being honked by passing articulated lorries. This was my experience in Miami a couple of days ago. So you're very passionate. Why are you so passionate about this whole Trump thing? Because oh, you could be doing better things today. I, I, need, I need to be able to afford my rent. I, I, need, I would like to be able to buy a home, and I know interest rates, I know everything costs less than, I know food just surviving down here. I know the rent is doubled in this area. The cost of everything is just... So you're generally high. worried that if America votes for Harris, the cost of living will yes, spiral price, even further out of control? For one of her policies, is the, is the price gouging. She's going to stop that with the groceries. So that's going to affect the farmers. Well, so, so, Michael, that was uh, Candice, of right. course it was. Uh, Candice in Key Largo, just outside of Miami, literally standing at the side of the road with pom-poms and Trump signs, uh, and actually only about 20 feet away from some Harris Walt supporters. And um, actually, the first question I asked them uh, was whether they ever come to blows, because they both seem to be so passionate. <laughs> what, what is it about the United States that, despite the fact that you've got a pretty couple of pretty lacklustre candidates, in my opinion, you get people standing at the side of the road all day cheering to encourage people to vote for their chosen candidates. Incredible. Well, as the uh, great political philosopher W.C. Fields said about 80 years ago, I never vote for anyone, I always vote against. And so we've got 160-ish million Americans who are running out to vote to stop the other person from being president. But you're right. Last night, uh, Vice Presidential nominee J.D. Vance, the Ohio senator, made a last second stop in New Hampshire, which isn't even a swing state. It's kind of on the edge of being a swing state. They had 24 hours notice. They had 2,500 people show up. They had 800 people in the parking lot listening on speakers because they couldn't get into the venue. And this, is in a, this isn't a hotly contested state. And sure enough, if you uh, drive around, you will see people standing in uh, you know, along the roadsides waving signs and getting people to honk. And so people are very, very passionate. The question that the uh, pollsters and pundits are asking is, who's more passionate? Is it going to be uh, college-educated suburban women who, even though they may live in states where abortion is not an issue because the state law, you know, has a, a, a an abortion law, they may still vote on that. They don't like the way Trump pe pe treats women. The Harris campaign has been running aggressively ads targeting women. In fact, they have one ad that says, ladies, remember, and you're in the ballot, it's a secret ballot. Your husband will know how you voted. And I'm, I have to tell you, I talked to some uh, Trump voters last night uh, at an event and asked the women about this idea that they keep their vote secret from their husband or he tells them how to vote and they all said the same thing. I tell him how to vote. What are you kidding me? Yes. And uh, there's the guys behind him. Oh, yo, yes, he, she tells me. Yes, I, she, I think, Michael, so, your, your, your point around people voting almost to stop the other guy, in right. inverted commas, male or female, is, is well made because the sense I got from being in the States for a few days last week was that there's a, there's a lot of people that are voting for Harris, not because they support Harris, who, right. frankly, in my opinion and my experience of her, again, particularly what watching all of the political shows over there, CNN, MSNBC, and so on, is that you know, she's pretty incoherent, I think it's fair to say. Uh, she doesn't say a lot, particularly when it comes to policy, but people are voting for her, particularly these celebrities, the likes of Beyonce and Taylor Swift right. and so on, because they don't want Trump. Now, I mean, th that's a pretty sad state of affairs, isn't it, for a whole country effectively to be voting not to elect someone rather than voting for someone on their own merit. Well, it's been that way for, since at least 2016. So this is where we are. It's a politics of polarization. It's also the politics of distrust. Nobody trusts anyone to solve anything. I was listening fascinating to your conversation about uh, illegal immigration in you know, the great in Great Britain and people coming over the channel, whatever. Well, and you the U.S. has an even bigger problem, right? Because Kamala well, Harris. Well, no, a bigger problem. But my point is you pointed out some kind of obvious common sense things that you could do to ameliorate it. Now, look, 
You and I are a couple of media guys. You know, we're, I'm not a prime minister or president. I could do seven things tomorrow that would help. But no one believes that the government is going to be as competent as their plumber or their, you know, dermatologist. But, but I think, but I think that, so, that, let, let's not forget that Kamala Harris has been vice president for four years. She was in charge right. of the border and 10 million illegal immigrants have been let in and bussed around the United States. That, that's a matter of fact. I think as a consequence of that, I hardly think that she can stand up as being a, a bastion of protecting mm. the US border. But on the other hand, Trump, of course, in his previous presidency and now in his rhetoric, he punches pretty hard, I think, when it comes to talking about immigration and indeed deportations. I mean, that's that's what he's gone big on in this campaign is simply deporting hundreds of thousands of illegal immigrants. So I, I guess, look, when it comes to the difference between those two candidates, you know, if you're at all worried in the United States about illegal immigration, you've got to vote for Trump, haven't you? Uh, he's definitely dominating on that issue. Uh, she's dominating on issues regarding abortion and also fear that Trump's going to be Hitler and take over the country, which just you just shows the failings of our civics cl classes here because it's not even possible for that to happen. So, well, but that that's it. But you, you know, on your point about immigration, Harris's problem is even bigger. Before she ran for president, she supported decriminalizing illegal immigration. You could come to the United States here illegally, and that would not be against the law, which is bizarre. But, but Michael, she you know even, why? I, it's because she wanted, she also advocated that within five years, those illegal immigrants would get the vote because they would right. be effectively citizens. So it, it's a great political strategy, isn't it? If you can bring a load of people in that are therefore, right. as a consequence of coming in, beholden to you, well, actually, they talk about Trump being almost a fascist and destroying democracy and being in power forever. Surely that even more so applies to the Democrats that want to kind of trick future voting on the basis of bringing people in that are bound to vote Democrat in the future. So the name you need to learn is Peanut the Squirrel. I've Have seen, you seen this. Made, but yes, yes. <laughs> and the, the point is, you know, if it fits with your conversation, because the story that people don't know, there was, someone complained there's a guy who has like an internet channel and he has a little pet squirrel. He found some squirrel in the wild that was, you know, didn't have a mom and he raised it. It's a, it's a pet. Yeah. And okay, Michael, can I just say, spoiler, it died. Yeah, well, because the government killed it, because the yeah. government's process of you can't have the squirrel killed it. And this is the metaphor for this. Like, we have a, country, a government that apparently will work harder to capture the pet squirrel and, by the way, kill it by accident yeah. than they will rather than stopping illegal the immigration. They don't so, have so, the skills. Michael, quickly before you go, um, A, I want you to try and call it. Who do you think is going to win? And secondly, just talk to me about this Iowa poll, this Ann Seltzer that right. apparently is a very, very highly regarded and respected she pollster, um, who's now calling Iowa for Harris significantly. And obviously Trump has come out and said you know, there, there is no way that Harris is so far ahead <laughs> in Iowa. Um, it seems that according to the New York Times as well, a lot of the swing states, the likes of Nevada, North Carolina, Wisconsin, Georgia, Georgia and so on are all for Harris. So on that basis, it looks like Harris is going to win it. But I'm not feeling that. How about you? Uh, if you look at the average of polls, it's still neck and neck. And Trump X has an advantage in the uh, in the swing states uh, like North Carolina, Georgia, uh, Arizona. So it's it, it, it's it's a knife's edge. We don't know what's going to happen. This what's what people are looking at the Iowa poll is. Is this a sign that those affluent suburban women are super energized? And if the rest of the uh, of the population turns out like they normally do, but then you have this extra boost of these of women voters, that could be very good for Kamala Harris. The yeah, Trump but, but, people but, but, say, but Michael, sorry, go on. Well, you say the Trump people say they've energized a whole army of guys who don't really vote very often, if at all, and they've got them going, they've got them registered, and this Kamala message of men are suspect, men are bad, watch out for the men, <laughs> wow. is actually energizing them. So she'll, you could she'll, have be them. she'll be advocating soon what we had in Britain a few months ago, which is all men should be under curfew after 8pm, I and mean, it's absolutely <laughs> ludicrous. Uh, Michael oh, no, Ryan. no, 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 my wife would never let me stay out till 8pm, 8, 8 she would never <laughs> let me do that. That's uh, Michael, as ever, thank you very much uh, indeed. Look, we're